So let's be honest, making a setting feel unique is really difficult. And the reason for that is because there are so many settings and they begin to all sort of blend together. They have magic, they have ecosystems. When you take into consideration the ones that people really consider to be unique, they're generally just something that's missing something from the usual consistency. Oh, in my setting, magic doesn't really exist and it's very rare. Or in my setting, the ecological or the political system looks like this because of magic. It doesn't end up feeling very unique. And on the flip side, you can go too far. You make everything feel so unique that nobody knows what's going on anymore. So how do you get that buy-in from your players to really feel like they're playing in a unique and incredible world that they can invest in. Well, it's not easy, but there's a few simple tips that might get you closer than you think. Honestly, when it comes to buy-in, there's one particular thing that you need to do. You need to get your players to know what it is that you're imagining. And the basis for that is usually finding something that they already know. I know that seems a little bit weird. You want your players to have buy into your setting. You want it to feel unique. And so you give them something they already are familiar with, but that is exactly what you need to do to get your players to invest into something. I made a video about Spelljammer a little bit ago, and I talked about the fact that most people refer to Spelljammer as D&D, &D, but as pirates in space. And that is exactly what it is. And Spelljammer is one of the most unique and easy to buy into concepts I've ever seen, despite the fact that it's so far out there. And why is that? Well, it's because I know what it is. Pirates in space. That's got to be the best pirate I've ever seen. So it would seem. I know the vibe. I know what's going on with that. And I get excited for it because I immediately begin to think, ooh, what kind of character can I play in that world? What kind of monsters will we face? What's going to happen? And that's the main thing, and one of the largest problems that I've seen with most homebrew settings that people create. They go so far into creating the political systems, they go so far into trying to create the different ecological things that go on in the world, they try and make sure that magic feels unique, they try and make sure that the monsters feel unique, they try and make sure that there's in-depth cities, and it just goes over my head. And I know that this is the case for a lot of players, and it goes over your head specifically because it's just too much. There's no basis. There's nothing to relate to in that. And that's why it's so important for player buy-in to get something that you're familiar with. Let me give an example. I once ran a game that was, well, Western themed. And the way that I did that was I created this. This right here is what I like to refer to as a campaign pitch. This is a brief description of the campaign. This is a brief description of the type of things that they can expect and then a mood board. And the mood board specifically I find to be so important because the visuals of that help people really understand what it is that we're looking at. It helps them understand what I'm going for. They see this and go, oh, I know that it's a desert themed Western. We're gonna go into a town and there's gonna be probably a crooked sheriff somewhere or we're gonna have to fight off some bandits. They know what to expect and find a way to invest in that for themselves. And that really helps me pitch the campaign to them because they know what it is that they're getting into. And that means they can create a character which they feel will fit in the world. And that is incredibly important for this kind of thing. See, something that is really important for dungeon masters to realize and understand is that when you're creating a setting, you have to give something for your players to be excited about. And the players are going to focus on their characters. Why? Because D&D and tabletop games are story-driven games that are driven by the characters. The characters must drive the story forward or else the game doesn't really work. It's not what the heart of the game really is. And so when you're looking at that, you have to create your setting with the players in mind. Let me put it like this. When you watch a James Bond movie, you expect to be excited for the type of things that James Bond does. You expect him to be suave. You expect him to be classy and skilled and practical and probably problematic towards women, which yeah, that's what the character does. The point is, you know what you're getting into when you're watching a James Bond movie. And so when you're creating a setting, your players need to be able to look at it and know what kind of characters they're expected to make. Now, you're not telling them what characters to make, but they know what characters will fit in the setting. If they don't know what characters will fit in the setting, it becomes incredibly hard to get excited because you don't know what sort of things you're shooting for. And if you want to create a setting that is very much based around the characters, that's 
totally fine. And in fact, I really like creating settings with that method in mind. But if the players don't know that, if it's not set as an expectation, they're not going to know what to do. They're going to find it so incredibly difficult to make something they feel they can invest into. And that's why it's important. But they need to have an initial point which they can invest in. It's very difficult for certain dungeon masters to realize because I get that we get excited creating our worlds. I get that we want to create the most in-depth thing possible for our players to explore, but we forget the most important thing, which is the players. The purpose is not to create the most realistic world. If that's where you have fun, do so, please. But don't forget the people who are supposed to explore that world. We're supposed to make it for them. Now, let me clarify something here. Am I trying to say that it is a bad idea to go in depth on the political, economic, or well, basically anything in your setting? Am I saying that it's a bad idea to dive in and make things realistic and fleshed out? No. I am 100% not saying that. What I am saying is when you are doing those things, you should be doing so with the intention of asking yourself, is this going to create an interesting story? Because it is about telling a story. It's about playing a game. You're creating it for a tabletop game. And so when you're creating the caste system or the political system, you should be asking yourself, is this going to be interesting for the players to interact with? Will this tell an interesting story? Will it be fun for them to figure out what part of the political spectrum they're on or where in the world they lie. Are they living in squalor while there's an elite living in absolute luxury? That will be an interesting story should your players choose to interact with it. But you need to consider, will it be something that's interesting to interact with? And if it's not, well, you could still flush it out, but do so on your own time. Don't spend the majority of your time planning, prepping, and creating your setting with the intention of them interacting with that, knowing that they won't have fun with it. I get that DMs are creators, we're writers, we're storytellers, we want to create the world, we want to create this incredible system, and there's nothing wrong with that. But D&D, much like any other storytelling medium, has its own specific limitations. And if you're going to ignore those, you're going to ultimately set yourself up for the failure because you're only one person. And one person can't design everything. Not with the time that we have allotted to us. Most of us have jobs and other hobbies and other people to interact with and care about and invest in. Because we have lives. So putting that much time into a world that you're ultimately not going to have fun with, is that really worth the time that you're going to be putting in? And that's something that you really want to consider and determine if it's worth your time. Ultimately, when you create a world, it is for your players. It's for your players to have fun and have a great time. And so you have to make sure that while you're doing that, you're doing it in a way that is going to be satisfying for you, the way that you see your players react to you, and your players. And when you do all of that, you should be able to have the best setting possible that can be invested in, but it really takes a careful eye and a lot of forward thinking planning. Because without that, it can all go by the wayside. Go out into the world, make it your own, and make a great world yourself. This video wouldn't be possible without the incredible beautiful bastards over on our Patreon. I'd like to give an additional very personal thank you to the Divine Bastards Big D the Cool Guy, BKBW, Clark Smith, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Frostios, Manifestering, Noctua, Rhea Rose, Rocky, Sorit, Supreme Court, Tinai, Void Mystic, Volt by Nico, and Zombies Were People Too. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you guys, and you mean the absolute world to us. Keep being beautiful, keep being amazing, and as always, make the world your own.